Hey, how is it going on? I was just here a second ago, but you're watching it probably on the next day or probably on the next week. That's the power of having videos. Anyways, let's continue our project. In the previous one of the project, we saw all of these window.getComputed style. We were able to grab some of the values. We saw that how things changes from background dash color to background color and similar such properties. So somehow, now we can actually grab the value or the color itself uh, from this web page of any of these elements. We just have to pass on this element and it is going to give us uh, the color for that. Now let's go ahead and talk about the events because no matter in what framework you will be working on, whether that's a React, Angular, Vue or any other, you will be working on events. So what is an event? When you hit that subscribe button, that is an event. That's a click event. But as a matter of fact, you can do that too. But there are many other events on the web page as well. For example, you input your information in a form, write some something there, that's an event, but there is no shortage of these events. So best resource for that is on developer.mozilla.org and they have these web events. And we got no shortage of these events. We got events related to the resource event. We got some of the network event that browser can detect that whether you are in offline mode or online mode, we have got some of the focus based events web socket, session history, and there is no shortage of them as you can see. There are view events, clipboard events, mouse events are something which are the most common one. For example, click event, you will be hearing this a lot. And then there is a mouse over, there's a mouse, oh, a mouse move, mouse over, mouse in. So there are a whole lot of them. Now one of them which we are going to use is going to be the mouse enter event, this one here. So how do we use it up here? Simply click on this and you can simply use this. Now, first and foremost, what you got to do in the examples, if you come up here, uh, notice here that mouse target dot add event listener. Now don't think too much of it. Uh, what you can do on any element, you can add this property, add event listener. And this add event listener property takes two parameter. What event you are looking up for, whether it's a mouse enter, the click event or anything else. And then you can pass on a callback here. So we'll be taking advantage of this. And go ahead, take a look. You don't need to memorize all of them, but just take a look. And it's recommended from my side that you take a look on it here. There probably are chances that your, my, my, your next might amazing app uh, might be there. So just with the click events, it can do a lot. So just take a look and you're going to be amazedly surprised. Now let's go back on to our application and try to learn uh, some of the fun stuff as well. Okay, now I know that this actually method can give me all the colors and I'm getting for this the orange element. Now I don't want to do this console.log, rather I would like to store this value inside a variable. So I'm going to simply say var and I'm going to simply say orange element is going to be equal to get bg color. So whatever the value that is being returned to me, I'm storing that in orange element or uh, orange element color. I know this is too much of a big name, but this is helping me to rec recognize that yes, this is actually the color that we are getting. Okay, nice and easy. Now notice here we are actually grabbing the element itself. So what I can do is I can take that element and I can add event listener onto that. Once you have specified or you have hunted for the event, whether that's a paragraph, it can be a button, it can be anything, it can be a division, it can be anything, you can add an event listener on that. Now two properties that are given to the event listener. The first one is what event you are listening for and second what you really want to do. So for example, most of the time you'll be saying click but we just saw that we have this mouse enter event as well. So mouse enter, I hope I wrote that correct. So we have this mouse enter and then we can fire a simple callback. Let's go ahead and do a callback. Okay, what do you want to do when this orange, uh, when your mouse actually moves on this orange element? Okay, what I want to do is I want to look for this center element, which we have already hunted down. So let's go ahead and have the center. Now this center has a lot of things that you can do. One of the thing that you can do is with the style. There we go. Now style and get computed style are two different things. Style is what you use when you want to implement some of the style. 
when you want to grab the style, then the best way is get computed style. Surely you can grab styles from this way as well, but the most recommended way is get computed style because it gives you the final result applied by browser and all these things. So depends on use case scenario, you sometimes actually grab the styling through the style as well. Now on the style, we have all these properties that we can work on with. I'm gonna use a simple property which is gonna be background, not background color, just the background. And I want to set that to this variable, which is orange element color. That's all I want to do. Okay, now what this is gonna do, as soon as my mouse goes to this orange, the event is gonna fire, based on when my mouse event actually goes. Then we're gonna go on to the center element, which we have grabbed through the query selector. It will add a property to this on its background color, the whatever the color we grab from it, basically the orange color. Let's go ahead and see that. So we're gonna come up here, hit a reload. Now notice when I go to red, nothing happens, nothing happens, nothing. As soon as I go to orange, now our center element grabs the same orange color and implements that up here. And I hit a reload and there we go. Okay, one more time. Let's do it a li little bit different. This time I want to do it for the pink. So instead of this one, I'm gonna grab it for pink. Notice here, I'm grabbing a pink color into, this time let's just call it as uh, just the color. Actually, that makes sense, so let's just call it as color. We are grabbing a pink color, and this time instead of the orange, let's hold up an event listener on the pink. Same, mouse enter, or let's just try another event. Let's just say this time I want to go for click. Again, you can go for mouse enter. This time, center.style.backgroundColor is gonna be the color. So let's just go ahead and save color. Let's go ahead and work on with this. Now when I hover my mouse, nothing happens, but when I click on this, now the event happens. So I think it's much more cooler to have this mouse enter event instead of this. So let's go ahead and say mouse enter. And by the way, mouse enter, yeah, there we go. There are other events as well in case you are interested in that, so let me just show you that. So there are mouse events, like there's a click, there's a double click as well in case you want to do that. Mouse down, mouse enter, mouse leave, which is pretty pretty funny one actually. It The things actually happen when the mouse leaves the environment. We got mouse out, mouse up, there's a whole lot that you can do up here and this is only these events for the mouse. We have drag and drop, media, there's a no shortage of these ones. So again, if I come back here onto this pink one, there we go. Now what I want to do is uh, this entirety of the thing that we were able to do, let's actually wrap that up inside a method and try to do it a more uh, kind of a dry approach. So let's get have these method. So let's go ahead and call this one as a method. So let's just call this as a magic uh, color uh, changer. Feel free to call this one anything. So this magic color changer is gonna take a couple of things. So let's go ahead and use the arrow function first and foremost. There we go, nice and easy. Okay, so what are the couple of things that we require up here? First and foremost, we need to change this element. So this element should be passed up. And uh, what color it should go up, so that should also is needed. And apart from this, uh, we need the color to be uh, passed on as well. But again, there is no requirement actually to pass on this center. Uh, because this is a common thing every single time. So we are gonna just refer to this center globally inside this method. Uh, so let's just skip that part. But we still gonna need color as well as this center. Color we can grab from this get background color and stuff. So let's go ahead and try that. So first and foremost, what do we need is we need an element here. So let's just call this one as simply, uh, what should I call it as? Element, uh, let's call it as element. And then the second thing that you need is actually the color. So the color is gonna come up from here. So let's go ahead and work on with that. So let's just say the computed color is being given to us. And then we come up here and just return this entire thing, this entire add dot all of this thing. So I can actually copy this and I can come back here. I'm gonna simply say return and paste this up here. Now I don't want it to apply to every time pink. This time an element is being given to me. So I'm gonna say element dot add event listener. We are using the mouse enter. Where do you want to apply it? In this case, I'm always applying it to center, so I don't need to worry too much about it. So center dot style color, and this time this color is directly used up here. Okay, that is uh, nice and awesome. 
So let's go ahead and try to use this one now. Let's go ahead and comment this whole thing out. We don't need it now. We have understood the whole syntax up here. Now let's go ahead and use it. So this time, the magic color changer is going to work. It requires you to pass on two things. First and foremost, we're going to pass it on red because that's the element we are getting. And now I can actually uh, get call this get BG color directly here and can pass on this element here, which is red directly. And this method hopefully should run. I'm not sure. OK, let's go ahead and see that if it runs. And there we go. It works here. The advantage of wrapping things up in the in the method is I can actually make a whole lot of duplicate and I can say a cyan orange pink. Let's just say this one is cyan. This one should also be cyan. If you are going to grab wrong color, it's going to be bad. And then we have a violet. And violet should go up here. We got orange. Orange should go up here. And we need one more, which is going to be pink. And I hope I am adding all of it. So there we go. OK, nice and easy. Let's go and see how it is working on. So red, cyan, purple, orange, and pink. There we go. So we can actually mouse over this. And you can play an entire disco here. And uh, even further, if we have enough of knowledge that we can play different music themes based on this, you can just scroll your mouse and it can be a nice project for playing the music. And you can just keep on scrolling your mouse. You have to make it a little bit bigger, these divs, but that's an easy stuff. And then you can have your electronic music being playing up here. Again, uh, we don't have skill yet to add music to this, but surely that's not a big thing. So I hope you now are understanding that how the JavaScript knowledge is helping you to manipulate the DOM. But this is just a tip of the iceberg that you can do with the JavaScript. But there we go. Uh, we need to learn a lot more about JavaScript. We have just touched the surface yet, but I'm pretty sure you are enjoying this part. So let's just call this project as done. Surely feel free to explore or ex uh, extend it a bit more on music or anything, whatever you like. We do that a lot in our other courses, but right now let's just keep it small. That's it for this one. Hit that subscribe and let's catch up in the next one.